you don't have enough time to do art, you really need to think about what is your minimum amount of time that you do need. You need to investigate and kind of define for yourself what is enough time. Because if you're like me, you probably have a set amount of time that you think of, maybe consciously or subconsciously, of the amount of time it will take for you to accomplish what you're trying to do. For me, I tend to think of needing about an hour, but you might have a different number in mind, whether that's half an hour, 15 minutes, three hours, um, but you need to define that for a couple of reasons. One of them is it kind of becomes aspirational so that like, if you want an hour or three hours or half an hour, you need to define that so that you may be able to sort of arrange that and aim for that and adjust your schedule accordingly to try to accomplish that. But I also think, and this is maybe the more important feature, is to, while you might hold up that amount of time as like the aspirational goal, you also want to sort of destroy that goal and not allow yourself to use the minimum amount of time that you have set in your mind as an excuse, because this is something that we do all the time. I know for me, when I think like I need an hour to do artwork, and if I look at the clock and I only have 45 minutes or 30 minutes, the odds are is that I'm gonna make a choice to not do art because I don't have enough time. You maybe need to reconsider how much time it really does take to do art, right? You don't wanna allow the perfect to be the enemy of the good. Because the way that I think about it is like, yeah, in an ideal perfect world, you have three hours to do artwork every single day. But that mentality might be the enemy of the good because if you have 30 minutes or 15 minutes or five minutes, as I did in this sketch, you actually will get some artwork done. And so that's the thing is like you want to think about trying to eliminate these mental barriers that you put in, in front of yourself because we already have enough barriers, right? The odds are is that, that it isn't just perceptual that there actually are limitations on your time. If you're like a normal person, you have family obligations and work obligations, perhaps school obligations, and those things take up a lot of time, they take up a lot of energy, and uh, there are responsibilities and things that you should attend to, so it's not like you can just automatically cut those out. However, you don't want to let the idea that you don't have enough time um, get to the point where it completely stops you, especially if making artwork is something that you want to do, especially if making artwork is something that's important to you, as it is to me. And I assume that it is because you're watching this video. So the first thing you want to do is, number one, identify how much time you think you need and set that up as a goal. Maybe there's a way that uh, you can accomplish that amount of time and we'll talk about that in a second. But the other thing is don't let that goalpost of the amount of time you think you need actually stop you from making art. I tend to think like I would prefer to have a full hour to do artwork, uh, to do a painting. And a lot of times when I look at how long it takes me to do a sketch or something like that, a lot of times it takes about an hour and so I would prefer that. I would enjoy that. I would love to have that freedom where I don't have to worry about how long it's going to even take. I know there have been times when I've had an open schedule where to me an hour of painting time often equates to a three hour block where I can walk around and find a scene to paint and set up and do a pre-compositional sketch and do all these things and paint and not have to worry about stopping anytime soon, right? I can just stop whenever I feel like it. Those times are super rare and, and hard to find. And again, we'll talk about that in a minute on how you can arrange for that dream scenario to become a reality. So take this sketch, for example. While I'd rather have had an hour to do it, I looked at the clock. I was at work in my lesson studio where I teach music lessons and I had about five to 10 minutes before my student arrived. And so I opened up the sketchbook, I looked at the window, found a scene down the street, and started to sketch in pen. One of the beauties of sketching in pen is that you can't erase it and get too um, caught up with your mistakes. You just have to put lines on the page and go from there. And then I had a water pen and a basic, you know, Winsor Newton Cotman watercolor set. Not my preferred watercolor, but it was what I had with me. And this kind of ties in with something that we talked about in a previous video, where if you keep a sketchbook with you, if you keep art supplies with you in your bag, keep some stuff in your car, keep a sketchbook, a tiny 
tiny sketchbook on your person, have some art supplies in your home, then you, you're gonna set yourself up to be prepared to do artwork when you have time available. And so while this wasn't as much time as I would have liked, I was able to get something down on the page in about five, uh, six minutes. Um, I had 10 minutes scheduled, but my client actually came early. So I heard her come in and I shut the sketchbook and went to work. It's more important that you start than that you finish. In a lot of ways, if you remove the minimum amount of time that you think it takes for you to do art and you just start something, even though honestly I wasn't happy with how this sketch finished, but I was happy that I had done some art that day. and. I was able to come back later when I had some time at home and while again it wasn't ideal and it wasn't the perfect scenario for me to do from life urban sketching, I had a photo that I took with my phone and I was able to keep working on it with some better art supplies and to kind of flush out this sketch a little bit more to my liking. It's more important that you start something than that you finish because that process of training yourself to have a habit where you start, you start making art, you start doing a sketch. You can always come back to that later and you can literally nickel and dime your artwork and do some, some more work on it later and prepare yourself with having art supplies handy and have that mindset like, I'm gonna build um, a habit of starting. That habit of starting will turn into a habit of continuing. And when you build a habit of continuing working on your artwork, you'll eventually build a habit of completing artwork. If you've ever heard people talk about not having enough time, there's sort of the obvious thing, which is to cut out superfluous things from your schedule. And perhaps you have that. I, I think it's worth addressing. Um, you know, you want to cut out social media, perhaps even YouTube videos. You want to cut out uh, watching Netflix and things like that. But I feel that most of us don't, most of us, if you're watching this video, if you're already kind of committed to a discipline, I, most people aren't totally crippled by those superfluous activities, a lot of times they're legitimate responsibilities, um, time drains and energy drains that are occupying your time and energy. And it's not as easy as turning the TV off to acquire more time. That said, I do think that it's worth looking at those superfluous things and seeing if there's any sort of bits that you can chew off the ends to carve out more time for you. So for instance, I look, my cell phone gives me uh, metrics on how much time I spend on certain apps. And in my mind, I'm thinking like, I don't watch that much YouTube videos. I don't spend that much time web browsing. But when I looked at it, it was a lot more time than I thought, a lot more time than honestly I'm comfortable with. And it's not like I sit down for extended periods of time looking at apps on my phone or whatever. It's actually a lot of short little bouts of times looking at social media, looking at YouTube videos, surfing the web. And at the end of the day, it adds up to quite a bit of time. So after seeing that, I realized like those little brief moments when I'm prone to grab my phone and just scroll for a minute or two, I could replace that with some other activities that I want more time for. Namely, I want more time to read and I want more time to do artwork. Every time I have that impulse to grab my phone and to scroll, I'm stopping that and instead I'm grabbing art supplies and doing art or I'm grabbing a book and I'm reading. And a lot of times it's just for a minute or two, but all of that adds up. And so if I can replace all of my screen time with uh, paper time and pencil time and paintbrush time, I'll be a lot happier because I will be um, eking out a lot more art practice. And that's something that's gonna help me achieve my goals. I think we all wish that we had hours a day to do art, I, I certainly do. And the reality is, is that it's quite difficult for most of us to accomplish that although it's not impossible. And if you, you know, maybe your schedule isn't filled with superfluous entertainment, but it's actually filled like most people with school, with work, with family obligations, obligations that you can't easily or reasonably move or sacrifice or change. Um, what do you do in that situation? 
Well, if you take some of these other steps, which are be ready to make art, remove the um, minimum amount of time that you think it takes to make art, be willing to do one minute sketches, five minute sketches, be willing to approach your artwork multiple times a day for a few minutes at a time, replace, um, you know, find any little gaps that you can and insert art making into that and be ready to make that art, be ready to do and willing to do small amounts, leave it and come back to it. The reality is, is if you have that mindset of starting, if you have that mindset of instead of every day I paint for an hour, but you have every day I paint and you remove any of these external obligations to yourself, except that I'm going to prioritize doing it in the way that I can, eventually over time, that will become such an ingrained part of your life that there will come a day when you're willing to rearrange your schedule or renegotiate the way that you intersect with your responsibilities to perhaps buy yourself those extended periods of time, right? If I, when I started out doing art, it was totally unreasonable for me to rearrange my schedule and my priorities and my responsibilities to carve out hours a day to do artwork. And the reason for that is because not, not only had I not earned that in terms of the people I'm responsible to, but I hadn't earned it for myself. And it just doesn't make sense to sacrifice aspects of my job or responsibilities I have to other people for me to paint because I didn't paint regularly. But when for an extended period of time, every single day, every spare moment that I have, I'm sketching, I'm painting, I'm starting to build that habit, it's becoming an ingrained part of my life, you can reach a point where you've proven to other people in your life as well as to yourself that, hey, this is an ingrained, important aspect of my life and I want three hours to work on this painting. I've uh, earned a painting commission and it requires three hours of, of painting time today. And you'll, you essentially work your way up to having that ask to, hey, can you help me pick up the kids from school today? Or, hey, I need to turn down part of, I need to reschedule my work or I need to make that sacrifice in terms of the intrinsic time sinks that you have in your life to allow more time, real time for your artwork because you'll have earned that not just in the eyes of other people, but in the eyes of yourself. Tim Ferriss, uh, I once heard him say this on a podcast or something that totally changed my outlook on it, is to think of your goal and then to think what is the easiest, um, fastest way to do a version of that thing. So obviously, like maybe the, e maybe the goal is to be a plein air painter and to paint four or five hours a day or to, to be a fully employed artist or to be an urban sketcher and have unlimited time. But like, what's the easiest to implement version of that to get started? Carry a sketchbook in your pocket and sketch for one to two minutes. Make sure that you are, you know, sketching every day. So have art materials at your work desk, have art materials in your car, have art materials in your pocket, have art materials at your house. Be willing to sacrifice little things that aren't a big deal, like cell phone time, YouTube time, Netflix time or any other aspect that makes sense for your schedule and start doing art. Don't be too prideful to say, I can work on this for five minutes and come back to it later. Don't be too prideful to say, if I don't have everything I want right now in the most perfect way, then I'm not gonna do it at all because that's a recipe for not doing art at all. But what you wanna do is you wanna flip that on its head and think, what's a recipe for me to do more art, more art, more art? And that involves you sort of slowly implementing these little tips in your life and having it become a lifestyle so that you really earn the right to eventually make the sacrifices, the big ones, the costly ones, if need be, to um, have more time for artwork. If you have any other tips for how you can buy more time for art or implement art easier into your life, leave a comment down below. And hopefully this video can be a resource for people to kind of scroll through the comments and leave tips for each other. And we can all help each other grow through this because it is challenging more and more. We all have things that are constantly pulling our attention and our time in a million different ways. And I think it's a beautiful thing when you make that commitment to try to implement art and beauty and creativity into your life. Remember that 
if this is something that you want to do and you're worth investing in so it's okay for you to invest some time in yourself and your creativity and your passion because that creativity and that passion and that appreciation of beauty is also going to affect other people when they see your art and i'm of the opinion that the world needs more beauty it needs more art it needs more creativity and so any way that you can put that back out in the world you're really helping the world become a more beautiful place so you have a voice that matters. Go be creative. I'll see you next time.